Today we are going to Target. Wait, wait, before you leave and before you stop watching this video, this isn't just any Target. It is what is, in my opinion, the fanciest Target in the world. Definitely at least the fanciest Target in Chicago. Let's go check it out. All right, so right behind me, right here, you can see the Target. This is the Target on State Street in downtown Chicago. If you live downtown or work downtown, you probably walked past it, maybe even been inside, but you may never have actually stopped to appreciate the historical features of it. So the first fancy feature of this Target is this outdoor metal frame facade. great is that that metal facade goes on and on and on around the entire exterior of the building. This right here. Let's check it out. All right, now we're inside. You'll see that much of the Target looks honestly like a standard Target. But what's great again is that they kept a lot of these historical features. Before we dive into more of those features though, let's get a quick history lesson. Over here on this back wall, right over here, they actually have a few signs that explain the history of this place right behind me. You see, Target only actually moved in here in 2012. For that, it was the department store Carson who inhabited this place for, I don't know, 80, 90 years. And that's where a lot of these fancy elements come from. The opulent department store style from the early 1900s. This building itself was built right around 1900, I think like 1904 or so, by Louis Sullivan, who's one of the famous Chicago architects. What's great is that when Target moved in, they didn't just get rid of all these historical pieces. Instead, they incorporated them into their own design. So yes, this is very Targetified, but it still has a lot of the awesome features from the building's history. And those are what make this place so fancy. So if we quickly walk through these signs, what you can see is that here's Louis Sullivan, the guy who actually designed the building, Here's that cast iron facade that I just showed you. And here's some clips of what it actually used to look like. And so we're right by the escalator right now, and the escalator itself has a lot of the design features from the historical building, including the marble and the metal. Now we're actually heading up the escalator to the second floor. So if we head to the back of the second floor, there's another section that explains more about the history of this place. This is the last historic design element here, these columns. Outside of those historical elements that I just mentioned, there are a few other things that Target did to blend the Target aesthetic with the history of the building itself. The first are the white marble tiles here. And well, I guess just all of the white in general. And yes, that is one of Target's colors, but it was also the original vision for this building way back in the 1900s when it was built. So by making everything white and having these white marble tiles, they're actually honoring the history of the building and the original vision of the building. There are also these red screens that you see behind me. These are designed, they're new obviously, but they're designed to echo the cast iron facade that's outside that we already talked about. And then finally, there's this big old bullseye right here, which of course is the Target logo, but they intentionally put it up here on the second floor as opposed to on the first floor, a part of, but not conflicting with the outdoor facade to honor that and to have it start to blend in and show that you have both Target here and all this history. All right, so that's that. I gotta go get what I actually came here for now. So hopefully you learned something or at least we're kind of entertained. See ya.